Welcome back. I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor of today's episode of North American Deer Talk, CNE Wildlife Products. CNE Wildlife is a trusted leader in biotechnology for the cervid industry. They offer micro encapsulated bacteria products that are research supported through Texas Tech University. With more than 30 years of experience and commitment to all natural probiotics, this product line continues to be a mainstay in herd management programs across North America. And the reason is simple. They are passionate about the cervid industry. They have products for elk, whitetail, muleys, red deer, and more, with products ranging from Fawn Paste and Electromax to Guardian Plus, Whitetail Energy Pack, Jumpstart, or their ever-popular Top Score Extreme, they just flat out work. We've been a CNE Wildlife product user for more than 15 years. To learn more about CNE Wildlife, check out episode 54 of North American Deer Talk, a probiotics masterclass with CNE owner Sadie Horrocks, and give her a call today to start using the products we do here. Hey, it's the Deer Wizard, host of North American Deer Talk. I want to tell you about a great new advertising and research platform that we've developed for you, CWDbreeding.com. You know, as the deer industry continues to mature and develop around chronic wasting disease and its known genetic heritability, resources like CWDbreeding.com become essential tools for deer managers across the country making decisions about their herds. I really wanted a platform that excelled at hosting GBV and codon markers in a filterable and searchable manner, but I also wanted to have high quality pictures, videos, ages, scores, NADAR numbers, and a whole host of other information to go along with that. This database puts everything in one easy to find location and allows you to access the industry's greatest genetic resources. I look forward to seeing all the great bucks that people have to offer in one easy to find location, cwdbreeding.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of North American Deer Talk. This is episode 91. I wanted to just say a quick thank you. I really appreciate everyone who takes the time out of their schedule to either watch or listen to the show. As you know, I enjoy doing these. Um, I like talking with all you. So if you're watching on YouTube, thank you. If you're not a fan of YouTube, check us out over on Rumble, North American Deer Talk. You can also find our uh, content over on, what's that thing called? The Gram, Instagram, uh, Servid underscore solutions. You can also... Uh, check us out on Facebook. We got a North American Deer Talk Facebook page. We got um, Servant Solutions page. We got it all. You can pretty much go to your favorite social media platform, punch in Deer Wizard, punch in Servant Solutions, punch in North American Deer Talk, and you will find us. So um, I hope everybody's good. We're We're running into... September here now and it hasn't it's cooled down. I mean it's been nice here. It's cooled down a bunch. Um we're still getting some some hot days and stuff, but man, bucks are rubbing out. I see a bunch of winter coats coming in, fawns are getting big. I suspect you all are doing the same. Um I like the format of the last show a bunch. And that was episode 90. If you're if you're uh, not following along, which is totally fine, if you're finding this by accident. Check out check out episode ninety. Um, I I pretty much just like wrote episode ninety on the page, and I wrote no show notes, and I just started talking. Um, and I like that a bunch. This time, I have a title and a and an idea, so I'll share that with you, and then we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get into it. Um, so I wrote down a question for the title and it is, what do you want? And this is in relation to the private deer industry 
generally deer farmers, et cetera. And in relation to a variety of things, I think I'd like to target in on the associations generally. And I'll, I'll put a caveat there, parentheses, and say, you know, business practices on our farm, right? Because if you're in business, any business, you butt up against the regulatory environment. So I find that the associations, at least from what I've seen and, you know, the, the ones I'm involved with, um, are a kind of a counterpoint to that, or at least a bit of a shield. Um, some may use the word advocate, et cetera. But as I think about, and I'll, I'm going to use my own state as an example, um, which is Pennsylvania. And for those of you that don't know, I am the president of the association, uh, at least here for a little while. I am, I am going to resign my, um, my position here uh, next month after our event. I've I've served a long time as as president and and been in leadership and it's just it's time for a break. Uh, I'm going to maintain my status on the board, um, but I'm just going to be a regular old board member. So I'll get to do, um, I'll get to do different kinds of work now, um, and it's been a good it's been a good run. You know, I think I, I'm you know 14 years on the on the board a couple as treasurer, a couple as vice president, and now four years as, as president. And it's a lot of work. Um, anyway, I got a young, I got a young family. It'll give me a nice little, little break. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll be back. Maybe the board will have me back, um, in a leadership role, but, uh, I need, I need a little bit of a break. So anyway, that's the first time I've kind of shared that publicly. So I figured I'd do it here, right? Not the point of the conversation we're going to have. But I have a an intimate understanding and relationship with associations, or at least our association here in the state. And it is, um, and, and if you hear me, if you hear me chomping on some gum, I'm sorry. I've been, I've been doing a lot of talking uh, my phone has been just lit up and having lots of conversations about all sorts of different things, uh, deer related, whether that be health stuff or, uh, you know, CWD or, um, our event coming up and, and we'll talk about, I'm going to write that as a note. That way I don't forget PDFA event. I will tell you guys about that. Cause we have a great, we have a great event, uh, planned for you all. Um, so when I look at the when I look at the association, again, ours in our state, um, we have this we have this mindset um, that I think's been kind of developed and nurtured over um, you know, call it the last decade anyway. And it, it it's clear to to me, and I think most of our board as well, that um, you know, chronic wasting disease is kind of that that anchor, that that you know, just weight that is a burden on our industry, and we've decided that that's the most important thing for us to to tackle. Now, I remember a long time ago, like I was involved in some of the, you know, the first kind of offsite health sessions that we had. And um, I remember, a, you know, a day long presentation with um, Dr. Weiss and Dr. Brooks. This was over in Penn State. Uh, this is a long, I mean, this is a while ago. And um, it was, 
it was really neat to do those. And we had presentations on bottle feeding fawns and, and uh, AI and all this other stuff. Right. So, and those happened kind of throughout the years and, and over time, and this was in a big growth period of our industry. And then like CWD showed up and it really changed everything. And and not not in a good way, right? It was something else we had to contend with, and the regulations around it um, were a mess for a long time, and very, very strict, right? Very re- restrictive, not strict necessarily, but restrictive. So they impede a lot of commerce opportunity and people people's ability just to survive. So the you know the board has taken a stance. Um generally speaking that this issue is is worth our limited time and resources right so you have a a volunteer group on pretty much all boards that i know of um and i've touched on this a little bit before and i've i've been thinking about this you know about the the paid positions um that we have in our industry and how much you know, how much advocacy we, we kind of get from that and, and some of the things we need, um, and we need to do better. We need to, we need to have a conversation about, um, how we, how we spend our money. Right. So it's, it's, um, these boards, right. You got whatever, 10, 15, 20 people and they're volunteers, right. So they're, they're not financially, they're not directly financially incentivized to uh, do any of this work. And that's fine, right? I, I think many of us had vol- volunteered to do something in our lives um, for free. And you have um, you have this this limited resource that is time for these these people to take time away from business family etc and work on behalf of a membership right so what i've seen is we've kind of tailored ourselves into this um this place where we we are our promotion which is very small right our advocacy is and this is starting to turn, but our advocacy efforts are typically reactionary. And it's because of that limited resource, which is time, but also the money too. Okay. So, and when I say this is changing a little bit, um, we can talk about uh, the ability to use new diagnostic tools and the ability to incorporate uh, genetics for susceptibility of CWD kind of into the mix of of tools that we have, right? And and we're able to talk about those things, which start changing the narrative. And also, there's there's something there's there's this sense of, or at least I get this feeling that there's this uh, sense of change in how not only ourselves, but others are looking at the CWD issue, recognizing through the things that we've said to them that there are tools available now. And, you know, basically sitting back and saying, good job for, for using those. Um, let's see how this all plays out. Right. And, and that's all, that's all good. So, you know, back to the, back to the time portion of it, you know, there's only so much that that we can do. And so like, we're, we're two, we're a week or two away from our, depending on when you're seeing this or hearing this, we're a week or two, week or two away from our Pennsylvania deer farmers event. And we've t- typically had uh, two of these a year. Um, one kind of a, a consignment sale, one, a fundraiser we've combined them. Um, and you know, we got a two day event coming up. It's a lot of planning, you know, like it's a lot of work to get, you know, a couple hundred donations and consignments put together, schedule speakers, food, venue, all the bells and whistles that go into this. And 
and you know we have one um paid office staff member that does a lot of clerical stuff um but it's all volunteers right so like it's really challenging and i've i've seen comments and i i just want to address a couple points that i've seen um i and i and i've heard that you know people are always like why why do the or the associations operate just for the next event or sale or whatever that may be and i can i can see how that can appear from the outside right um we really try in pennsylvania to to work in between the events now you know when we're doing a basically a fall sale and a a spring sale or a fall event spring event um you know we try to fill those gaps in between it's a little easier when there's one a year where you just you can you can do your work um but i started looking back at especially this year uh the things that that we've done in our state um, and they're, you know, they're, they're little events, you know, it might be a farm show, um, little events. Our farm show is, is huge in our state. It's, it's, it's a monster. Um, and it's, uh, nine days or something. We have a booth there. So we have to schedule people there. And again, it's all volunteer stuff. So, um, you know, we're out there with the the deer farmers booth and we got the antlers out and people stop by and they, they see them. And of course there's kids there and kids love seeing the antlers and holding them. And that like all that stuff requires time, um, requires a little bit of money to make sure that that, um, you know, booth is paid for and we have the items we need. And, you know, you look at the trips to the Capitol, you look at our lobbying efforts and, it's, there's, there's a lot that goes on and we try to do our best and, and, and I try to make sure that I communicate to the best of my ability, uh, with our members and, and of course, anybody that'll listen about what we do. Um, I, I think that, I think that we've taken a, a really good stance on, uh, CWD. Again, I believe that it is the the pinnacle issue for us, uh, in the, in the private deer world. And I feel like we're coming out of the other side of that. And I talked a little bit about this last episode. It's, it's, it's deep on my mind. And, um, one of the reasons is, is we are working to produce a full featured video on the importance of what it is we do in relationship to not only CWD, but in a large part CWD, but to things like land conservation and habitat improvement, to supporting local communities and local business, to um, the outdoor and recreational experience of, of hunting, and also to our families and and how we choose to live. And I think that I'm excited to do this show. And and I will I will make sure I share more details as we as we go on. But that's that's happening right now. I'm I'm, I'm really working hard to develop a story um that I think is compelling but is very different from that of which we have seen before. Um I hope I can do it. Uh, I'm reaching out to some people that that um, have helped me in the past, or or can give me um, inspiration and and confidence, and um, I I greatly appreciate their their guidance and mentorship and and friendship for that matter. Um, so I I I just I hope that that that's worthwhile, and the reason I say that is because it's costing our association a bunch of money to put this together. Um, and it'll be, you know, we decided that it was important and this is a proactive step for us to take, um, as opposed to being reactive. And I feel like we're, we're doing more of these things that are 
are proactive. And back to the event side of things, we we do those um, obviously for for a couple of reasons. Um, one of which is it's it's the way for us to fund the association to operate, but also to create these promotional tools um, for you all to use. And we need to do more of that. We need people to step up and volunteer to help, volunteer their funds, volunteer their their mind power. All these things are important. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to, sometimes it's easy to sit back and let somebody else do it. Um, or, or maybe be bitter or upset about something or just not want to participate or not believe in the, in the, in the cause or the mission or whatever that is. So I come back to where we started and that is, what do you want? What do you want this industry to look like long-term? What is important for your specific operation what do you want the associations to do what message do you think we need to communicate are there certain political and policy items that need addressed what is that and if you tell me personally uh, it will not fall on deaf ears i have to go out and solicit this this type of stuff, this type of information from people. And again, that takes time. Of course, I'm just, I'm just one guy, right? I'm, I, I know there's others that do this stuff. Um, tell your local leader, tell your association president or board member, brainstorm some ideas, put, put them on paper, come to a, Come to a meeting, participate in a call, come to an event, man a raffle booth, talk to your local neighbors about what it is you do. These are, these are all, all things that are important. Um, but you know, for, for me personally, anyway, um, it's always good to interact with with um, people that have ideas about the deer industry. Um, I suspect all of us come at this from a a very deep love of of the animal. Um, there is something special about white-tailed deer. That's a fact. I everybody that I deal with in my life on a regular basis, you know, is pretty much a deer person. Um, not quite everybody, but you know, most of you and, and some of you all that are listening, you know, we're, we're friends and, you know, we talk occasionally and we share stories and talk breeding and all the other stuff, but like, it's just deer. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't know many, many people. Um, if it wasn't for deer, most of the people I've met that are, you know, good friends now are, are deer people. This is, this is what we do. This is what we love. Um, it's amazing. Uh, how people are brought together because of this animal. And I want that to continue. I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose a bunch of friends because, you know, they're, you know, they're not in business or I'm not in business or any of that stuff. Like, and I want us to be successful. There's a ton of opportunity here, a ton. And, and I want to be able to take advantage of that. So I want you to, uh, I'll keep this short. Hopefully this is, um, you know, it spurs something in your brain and maybe you reach out, um, for, you know, somebody in your, your state association or, you know, you kick the can at one of the, one of the national associations, um, they want to hear from you. And if you're not getting resolution on issues or you're not seeing things implemented and just recall, remember things take time to get into place and, and work through. But if you're not making headway where you are, um, you have an open line here. 
call me. I, I talk about this stuff all the time. Uh, I work on this. I work on our industry all the time. Every, every day of my life, pretty much. It's, it's rare. I take a day off that I'm not, you know, dreaming about some part of, of, uh, of the deer world. So anyway, um, I'm going to wrap up on, uh, the show with a PDFA event. So September 14th, and I don't have anything in front of me. So shooting off the, off the hip here in my head, uh, Pennsylvania deer farmers association has a two day event coming up September 14th and 15th. Um, things kick off about the trade show floor opens eight o'clock Thursday morning. Program starts at noon. We have speakers from um, Sean Schaefer, uh, Glenn Dice speaking about kind of national USDA issues. We have some panel discussion. Our keynote speaker for Thursday is Dr. Davin Henderson from CWD Evolution. He's going to be talking about uh, RT Quick, which is a diagnostic uh, testing method, along with uh, its relationship to chronic wasting disease and the scent and urine business. We have our stalker breeder sale that afternoon, uh, excuse me, the stalker sale that afternoon, dinner, breeder sale, and some pack fun lots after. Early morning, um, Friday, doors open at eight, and we have updates from uh, the Capitol on the lobbying and policy front. Uh, legislative front. We have members from the Department of Agriculture to go over the CWD uh, grant funding programs and our our, our state program and its direction. Uh, we have some Q&A on that. And then we have uh, Dr. Christopher Seabury, who will be in the house uh, with us um, 10 o'clock uh, for his keynote presentation on CWD genetics. So uh, we have an awards. We're going to do lunch and an award ceremony. You'll get an update from me on all the things that have gone on. And then we'll kick off our fundraiser. Fundraiser is going to run oof, five hours anyway. Um, tons of item furniture. We got uh, hunts, fishing trips, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, semen, deer, the whole works. Um, it'll. We have a, our gun raffle. It's going to be a, it's going to be a really good event. Lots of information about all the things that we have done, are doing and a direction forward in the future. Um, I would really love to see you there. Um, if you try to talk to me, <laughs> I apologize in advance. I get, uh, I get wrapped up doing the, the show and, and I think, Sometimes I may come across as, as rude or short with people where I say hello and I'm just kind of move on. It's, it's only because I'm busy and I, I care that the show goes off without a hitch. Um, but I'd love to see you there. I'd love to shake your hand and I'd love to be able to talk to you about all the things that we're doing here in Pennsylvania, because I believe we are on a, a really good path forward. I know it's hard to see now. Um, but, but I'm, I'm confident that, uh, that we're going to come out of the other side of this thing, uh, better than ever. And I'm, I'm, I'm just really bullish on, on the deer industry, um, over the next, you know, five, 10 years. So anyway, I appreciate y'all listening to me today. Um, if you like the show, share it out. You can check out old episodes. Uh, we got lots of them. They, I will pin one i think it's on this side i should i should probably remember i think it's on this side um but check those out we'll see y'all later with that we'll wrap up stay tuned for another episode north american deer talk